In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can create this image that I sourced from Instagram and replicate it in ARCHICAD 25. So we're gonna be starting with this image here in ARCHICAD 25 and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. First of all, we're gonna start by pressing Command and 7 to bring up our story settings. As you can see in this picture, it looks relatively low. So what we're gonna do is change, so what we're gonna do is change our story settings to manipulate what we can see in this image. I'd be assuming that our ground floor plan, which is the bottom of this picture, would be about 2445, and then we'd have about a 250 millimeter slab in our structure or our ground ceiling. Our first floor would again be 2445, and again, 250 millimeters of structure. But looking at this, there is that small little 50 millimeter gap between the first and the second floor to make it seem like it's floating. So we're gonna bump that up to about 300 millimeters. And we're gonna change our story settings here to say first ceiling, so we can delete all that extra. We can insert one more above and go second floor. That second floor is definitely a little bit higher than the rest of them, so let's call that 3045 and we're gonna leave it at that for now. We don't need any of those ticked, so we can completely remove those off and press OK. What you'll see here on the layout indicator panel is that they have now changed for us. So traditionally speaking, I'd be telling you to use this second view map in our layout book instead of our project map, but for simplicity, we'll keep it on the project map. Let's start with our ground floor and just scroll across somewhere where it's not too important, we're not worried about our elevation and our section markers. We're gonna start with our ground floor and we're gonna focus predominantly on creating this image that we see in front of us. We're not gonna worry about anything behind, anything internally. We're just gonna keep it very simple, very basic. So let's start with our wall tool. Make sure we are on walls external and that we select a wall type that we feel appropriate. For me personally, I'm just gonna go 90 millimeter stud doesn't matter what wall system you select. So I'm gonna estimate that this driveway in the middle is about four meters wide, and then I'm gonna estimate we've got two meters on one side and probably about another four meters on another side, which gives an overall length of about 10 meters. Now I'm gonna start by basically mirroring this image onto our page. So what you see in the left-hand corner is going to be the left-hand corner of my screen. So if we click once, hold shift, press D, type form 1000 to give us four meters, and then we're gonna go hold shift, press D, type 6,000 to get six meters back into our garage. Again, continuing that process, I believe that entry is four meters wide. We're coming back even and level with the front of our house and then going back two meters. And now all I'm gonna do is simply drag it back down about 15 meters and finish that entire thing off as a completed box. So now we're gonna select these two walls here and if you have all of your walls connected, we're gonna press Option G or Alt G to ungroup and then we're simply gonna click on that little node, go down to our fillet or chamfer and introduce a rounded corner. So I'm gonna guess and do a little bit of trial and error here to understand what size corner that is. We're gonna start with 2,000 millimeters or two meters, which creates a rounded corner here. I think that's a little bit too much, so Command and Z will undo that. Let's bring that down to a one meter corner, and that's starting to look a lot better. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. One meter rounded corner gives us the look we're looking for. Next, we're gonna come across to our window tool, and we're gonna basically create these four doors down the bottom that we see. So we can easily use any of the ARCAD windows. So for example, this horizontal multi-sash is almost perfect for us. We're just gonna extend that to four meters wide. We're gonna extend that to 2,400 high and click OK. And then we're simply gonna drop it into the center of our wall and finish that window off. If we come up to our marquee tool, make sure we select the thicker dashed lines to show us all of the levels. Marquee, right click, show all in marquee. We're gonna see what we've started to create in 3D. So first of all, our window is way too high up. We can reduce that seal height back to zero. So it goes back down to the ground. And if we go Command or Control T, we can open up our settings, go to our material attributes, and then change all of that to black so that it matches the image that we see in front of us. Pressing okay. 
looking at this image, we're starting to create something very, very similar. Now there's a number of ways we can create this timber pattern on the bottom. The easiest way is through a material texture. Alternatively, we can do it with a cladding system, but in this video, I'm just gonna show you a material texture. Now our CAD by default doesn't have anything that looks like this. So what we're gonna do is jump on Google right now and try and find a nice orangey, earthy timber texture tone. So what I've done is simply jumped onto Google, typed in timber cladding texture seamless, found an image that I like, right click, save to downloads, and then if we come back to our ArchiCAD model. Now, a quick little interlude for you guys. If you're looking for anything architecture or ArchiCAD related, make sure you check out davidtomich.com.au. It's the first link in the description. You'll find everything that you need. We can come up to window, toolbars, and then down to attributes, which is gonna introduce this brand new little toolbar. We can come up to our surface textures material, go to something similar. So if we find our timber or wood grain, let's try find a wood light oak. We're gonna go new vertical cladding and we're gonna duplicate that system entirely. So we have all of that wood texture already created. Next, what we're gonna do is change our light wood texture. So we're gonna to go to browse, add, and in our downloads, we're gonna find exactly that image we just created. So we're gonna open that up. We're gonna let ArchiCAD introduce that image directly into our project. We're gonna keep the original proportions so we don't mess with how it looks on screen. Then we're gonna click okay, go back to our attributes and we're gonna do duplicate that once more. So we go horizontal cladding, click OK, and jumping back to our vertical system, we're just gonna change that to 90 degrees so it goes vertical. Pressing OK, closing our attributes panel now, we can easily select the main walls in our project that we see as timber, press Command or Control T, and override our surfaces to wood vertical cladding. Now if we press OK, we'll see that's automatically been created and replicated into ArchiCAD. Straight away, we're starting to look a lot like the image we see in front of us. Now, if we go to our first floor, right click on the ground floor and go show as trace reference, we're gonna see where our project currently lies. If we then go to our slab tool, we're gonna to be able to create a slab somewhere over that section there. So we're hanging over this garage, but not by too much. So I'm gonna come all the way back here, type in 1500 minus, so it automatically calculates the difference between where it was and where it needs to be. Now we need to create a very smooth, sleek line on the right-hand side of this image that slowly curves back into the boundary wall over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new hotspot in the middle here, roughly in the middle of our driveway, and then we're gonna curve that corner. And I'd like to curve it, let's start by three meters, test that out. That's a very harsh, steep curve, probably a little bit too much. So we'll drop that down to two meters and try again. Coming back to our 3D marquee, we'll see that we're starting to get that shape in. Now I've just realized that's completely back to front and I should have realized that a long time ago. So what we're gonna do is select everything on the 3D model, spin around to the back, Control or Command M, find the center of our slab, click once, hold shift, click again, and mirror that entirely. So now that we look from the front, we're looking picture for picture. Next, I'm gonna click on this slab, click Command T, go to generic and change that to concrete. And I'm gonna reduce the slab edge down to only 10 millimeters. Now this is not a structural tutorial, this is mainly an architectural modeling replication to be able to actually introduce what we're looking for. So if we come back to our first floor now, hold our Alt button to get the eyedropper tool over the timber walls below. And then what we're gonna do is simply follow our curved wall lines of the slab below. If we then again press the eyedropper tool, align ourselves with the center of that mullion below, we can then create the setback window in this image that we're seeing on the left-hand side. By reducing our wall back, leaving our outrigger here on the right-hand side and coming back into 3D, you'll see that we're slowly starting to create what we see in this image. Now next we wanna focus on those angled slab and angled roof diving back into our main window of this living area. So if we create this window first, we're gonna be able to articulate these roof lines and slab lines a lot quicker and a lot easier. Now let's come back into our first floor plan. Let's go back to our window tool and open up our window settings. I'm simply gonna select window 25 and make that a fixed glass sash. I'm going to drop it in in 3D and drag it out to the size that I need, which is all the way across that entire property window. 
Now, as you can see, that window is probably too big, too large, so I'm gonna offset it 300 mil from the bottom and increase the height of it to 300 mil from the top and change the material of it as well. So now we have one large glass plane window that we can start changing our materials with. Looking back at it, we probably don't need that to be 10 mil. It can be the full 250 mil like we originally planned so that it comes back up to the bottom and will soon cut the bottom of this slab in a very unique way. So we wanna come back to our floor plan. We wanna use our roof tool now and we wanna create a small roof structure on both the top and bottom. Now the easiest way we've created that roof very quickly, we can come back down to our 3D we can change our roof structure. This is just a generic modeling shell, so this definitely can be 10 mil, and it definitely needs to be concrete as well. We can adjust that down to the bottom of our slab so it cuts back in, and we can start lowering the angle until it's perfect with the bottom of that window. So 20 degrees in this instance is absolutely perfect. It's probably a little bit too steep comparing it to the image. So if we wanted to increase this window and decrease the pitch of that roof, we absolutely could. Next, we're gonna click on this slab, right click, connect, solid element operations, and then we're gonna select our roof, add as operator, subtract with up and go execute. That's gonna cut off and create that pitch that we're looking for. And again, I still think that's way too steep, so I'm gonna decrease that down to 10, maybe 15, and increase the size of this window so it looks a little bit better. Then I'm gonna click Command D and press the option button to be able to then replicate that, that roof above, change it to minus 15 and adjust the window to suit perfectly. So there we go, we've started to create our angles, we've started to create our windows and we've started to create our curves. So far, we're three quarters of the way through and there isn't much left in this project. What I'm gonna do now is make sure that all the materials of this concrete are exactly the same. So I'm gonna override all of the surfaces on the slab and the walls to concrete light 23. And there we go, now all of our surfaces are exactly the same and we can continue on with our last or second floor. So coming back up to our second floor in our project map, we can right click and show us trace for our first floor so we know where we actually are working. Coming back to our slab tool like we originally did, we're gonna this time create a slab slightly skewed to one side. So by the looks of it, the easiest way we can do this is by replicating the size of our slab below, offsetting two meters from one side, dragging it forward what looks like about a meter and a half, and then showing our ground floor as our trace reference, pressing Control or Command E, using the right hand nodes to be able to angle our project across. Looking at it, it might be about 10 degrees, which appears to be approximately perfect because it doesn't touch that boundary, it doesn't go all the way across. And then coming back and showing our first floor as our trace reference again, so we understand where we are. Once again, we're probably a little bit too close, so we're gonna drag that out by pressing Command D, another one meter. Last but not least, I'm just going to simply extend this slab all the way to the edges more so for me personally than anything else because that's how it would be constructed. And coming back to our 3D so we can see what we've created. Then we're gonna reduce our slab height to 200 millimeters rather than 250. So we can create that floating levitating effect that we we're looking at before. Again, it appears that we have that same 15 degree pitch roof and floor lines coming in on that. So we're gonna be able to create that in a second. We're gonna open up our slab settings and change all of our surfaces. So on the bottom, we're gonna have our wood cladding horizontal. On the sides, we're gonna have our wood cladding vertical. And on the top, we're probably gonna have our wood cladding horizontal as well. Pressing okay to make sure I got that correct. Yep, so now we can see that our wood cladding is on the bottom of our slab. It's on the sides of our slab and we can continue with the surfaces above. Coming back to our first floor plan, it's relatively simple. We can show us trace reference for our ground floor plan. Use the walls below because they're already timber. Again, drawing the box out and a square using the slab we've created already. Taking that main front wall, dragging that back what appears to be three, three and a half meters. It's quite far back in, quite deep. So let's go three and a half meters for the purpose of argument. Go back to our window tool, introduce a small window on the side and bring that larger, which looks to be about two meters wide. Coming back to our 3D, we can see that we've started to create our top floor. And what we can do is actually replicate our slabs from the first floor. So holding the Alt button again, coming up to our second floor, we can 
once again create our roof then go back to 3d understand where that window is actually meant to sit that doesn't look as steep because it's quite far and quite deep so i'm going to reduce that five degrees across the whole pitch increase the size of our window extend our roof to the top and adjust our window once again so now that that has been created i'm going to go through and change all these materials to match the timber as we need and then by the looks of things it looks like we have a batten system across the front of our wall now again multiple ways to be able to create this if we come into our second floor up the top the easiest way which isn't very customizable later on is by creating a consistent timber column start with the column tool open up our settings make that a, a 25 by 25 timber batten and change our material across to timber and then we can drop one of our columns directly in here bring it to the front so we can actually see what we're doing command d rotate it around to match our wall offset 25 offset 25 and then we can click in the center go to our distribute or our multiply tab at the end distribute jump across the spread and let's make that a 40 millimeter distribution so now if we click on one corner and drag it all the way across to our window we can create a series of new columns very very quickly and very repetitively group them together so we can move them and edit them easily come back to 3d and we'll see that we've created our timber batten system and that's all for me today guys my name is david tomich and i'll see you next time